looks like we're good to go. All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics of interest to libraries. Um, the show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and it is then posted to the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel and to, onto our website, so you will be able to watch. You can um, go to our website and watch at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where all those um, recordings can be found. We do a uh, mixture of things here on, on Compass Live, book reviews, interviews, demos, mini training sessions, um, basically anything related to libraries. Libraries is really our only focus here. Um, we, so uh, as the Nebraska Library Commission, we are the state agency for libraries across the state. So public, academic, K-12 schools, uh, special uh, correctional facilities, anything and everything you think of that has a library, we, we've done something for them. Um, both our live show and our archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone who you think may be interested, <coughs> excuse me, in any of our shows, they're welcome to join us live or watch any of our archives that are on the website. <coughs> excuse me. Um, we do bring in guest speakers sometimes to do sessions from libraries across Nebraska, from organizations around the country, but we also do have library commission staff that do things that we have this morning. Today um, with me is um, Holly Duggan, who is our continuing education coordinator here at the Nebraska Library Commission. So anything related to earning your CE, uh, taking basic skills classes, doing courses, education, professional development related, all that. All that is <laughs> Holly's uh, uh, purview. Um, and she and I together are actually going to be talking about today's uh, topic, which as you can see here on our Library Commission website is our second uh, item here on the our blog is about our continuing education training and internship grants. This year, we have a few different grants that we're offering through the Nebraska Library Commission available to libraries in the state. And uh, we had a session last week about our youth uh, grants for excellence. Sally Snyder, our uh, children's and youth librarian, youth services librarian, talked about that. And we also have our CE training and internship grants. Now, I'm going to show you here on our website, if you go to our commission's website, nlc.nebraska.gov, we have here on our flyout menu a section on grants, funding, and E-rate, basically anything, ways to get money for your library, basically, or things that you're doing, yeah. And we have lots of different resources here, but over here we have our NLC-related grants, things that we do here through, um, out of the library commission. There is our CE Grants link. Um, we have a current Library Innovation Studios project that's putting makerspace equipment into libraries across the state that we're doing right now. Internship grants, library improvement grants. Um, we have a Sparks grant, an ILS Sparks grant. We're putting kind of homework hotspots and internet connections into public libraries and youth grants for excellence. Um, the two ones that are uh, outside of commission grant funded monies from the IMLS, the Sparks Grant and Library Innovation Studios have their own pages, but all the other grants are things that we do via, through the Library Commission, where we uh, disperse the grants, we evaluate the grants and everything. So we have a general link here for about NLC grants that talks about all of those. So this would be then your main page for the grants that we give out through the commission so that you apply to us for and that we then um, distribute to you. So we have links here to our specific pages for the, the four grants that we have done over the years. This year, with the budget that we have available to us, we are doing three out of the four. Uh, continuing education and training grants and internship grants you're going to learn about today. And then the one at the bottom here, youth grants for excellence. Are, are the three that we're at, we have the funding to do this year. Library improvement grants we have done in the past. These are grants mainly for doing things that are related to your um, library building. More, uh, we need equipment for something. We need to update, uh, make our entrance ADA compliant, do a digitization project, things like that is what library improvement grants are generally for. And this year, just due, due to budget restrictions that we have here at the state of Nebraska, um, we did not have enough funding to do all four of these grants. So this year we are skipping the library improvement grants 
look for them maybe next year. Hope, fingers crossed that our budgets will um, make that available. Uh, but with the money that we do have, we did Luth Grants for Excellence, which last week was the Encompass Live session about that. So go back and look at that if you want to know more about that. And then our internship and teaching education and training grants. Now, internship grants, we've pretty much done every year regularly. Uh, they've been for different purposes sometimes. Last year, they were focused for those uh, the Library Innovation Studios makerspaces. Uh, this year, we're opening them up to anybody and everybody. Um, continuing education and training grants have worked a little differently over the years. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about those first. So I think I'll hand over to you, Holly, if you want to talk about that and explain yeah. you know, what we've done in the past, what we're doing now, okay. what's up with all that. <laughs> so the past. Our last time we did this was 2016, mm -hmm. and um, before that, I think it was 20, 2012 or 2013. Um, but it's been focused on the ARSL conference attendance. So then this right. year, we, yeah, we did it in 2016 to go to ARSL, Association of Rural and Small yeah. Libraries Conference, because that one was in, in South, Dakota. South Dakota, so yeah. it was close enough. And then the one the time we did it before that was back in 2013 because ARSL was actually in um, Omaha. Uh -huh. yeah. So we did it then and sent people to that. Yeah. And then 2012 was the last time we did it where it was just open. this more open to anything you might want to And that's what we wanted yeah. to do again. Right. Um, so you can either get it from that page or if you go back to this flyout menu and just go straight to under the NLC grants, continuing education grants. And that this is the main page. Um, so really the purpose of this grant is to improve the library services provided to their communities through continuing education and training. So that's the main goal of these. Um, if you click on this 2018 grant information, this will take you obviously to the details, what you need to know. So this year, as we're opening, up, opening it up again um, to the three kind of different areas, you can either um, attend an out-of-state professional conference. This doesn't have to be ARSL. It can be, it can be anything. anything outside of Nebraska. We're trying to get it so that you can look outside to find a conference that you really wouldn't be able to attend without a little extra help. Um, and then second, taking an online CE course. And then the third is the bigger, larger CE projects meant for groups and staff training. Um, so then going through each one, conference attendance is pretty straightforward. Um, Out-of-state conference, eligible expenses, registration, pre-conferences, meals, travels, lodging. That's a lot. You can pretty much everything yeah. that you need, you, really. can, you can apply for to yeah. get covered, yeah. Um, um, and it doesn't have to be, well, if you have a question about a conference that you want to attend and you're not quite sure if this grant would cover it, just email me and I'd be happy to take a look at it. Yeah, because it is interesting that we would specifically say just out of state professional conferences. Because yeah. it could be not, technology, it could be. Right, not yeah. just library conferences. Think outside the box yeah. if there's something, if there's a marketing conference. Or a literacy. Yeah. yeah just mm -hmm. Really, what would you like to attend and what would be most relevant for your position? Right. What would be most helpful for your library and your community? Um, and I'll go through the application form separately. But then second, so we have the taking an online CE course. So this would cover tuition for an individual to take an online class. Mm -hmm. These could be from Library Use Academy, ALA, Info People. Mm -hmm. um, it can be from other other providers of online CE, but again, if you have a question about if it would be eligible or not, just let me know. Mm -hmm. There's um, lots of different places out there that do um, yeah, online courses now yeah. that available, but there's a lot of things to do for free, like our webinars here, but yes. there are still ones out there like ALA that are still charging you, and I know for some people that can be a struggle. Yeah, because some and of these some, classes are about 200 dollars each so yeah. and some of them are more like we do these one hour webinars so these are like a, a like a month or a month and a half long mm -hmm. like it's an online course that you go to every week type thing yeah, yeah. more intensive yeah. more specific so if there's a you know maybe a cataloging class that you really wanted to take apply for the grant mm -hmm. um, so then what's not eligible for the online courses is anything offered by NLA NSLA uh, library commission regional systems because again we're trying to expand and 
offer you opportunities that just wouldn't be um, possible otherwise. And then online courses that would count towards a college degree or professional certificate from a college or university are also not eligible for this grant. Um, so I was just trying to adjust our camera. Oh, that's <laughs> um, So then last are the bigger CE projects. These are intended to be for groups of librarians, um, staff. It doesn't have to be staff from a single library. It can be, but if you want to collaborate with another library, um, multiple libraries within the system, within the state, that's awesome. Just identify a CE training need that you, that your community area state needs, come up with the project. Um, so this is like when you're bringing in like, um, doing an in-service day, yeah. and you're paying to bring in some special speaker from out of state yeah. or something. Speakers, workshops, yeah. um, there are some example projects of what has been done in the past, so bringing in a speaker for trustee training, uh, oh, yeah. bringing in a speaker workshop for a whole in-service day, half-day half, half day training, just whatever um, you can think of. Um, 2013, well, so 2012, um, they applied a group with the systems and NLA collaborated to put together this ALA Chicago road trip that allowed, um, I don't remember how many librarians, but a group of librarians to attend ALA Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, this was one of the bus trips mm -hmm. that they did? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and that was a little different. It's kind of a conference, kind of a group project, but, um, but it sounded like it was very mm -hmm. successful. So. I noticed that just recently an email went out last week about trying to organize people going to is it MPLA? MPLA? Yeah. yeah. When is that? Yeah. I don't remember. So that kind of thing, if there's costs involved in that or if I'm not sure how are we going to do that. Um, it just depends on when it actually is taking place. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, October 24th. Ah, and it's just down in Wichita, so that yeah. makes it that would be an easy one to get a bus trip to. But yeah, so it doesn't have to be necessarily a bus trip, but that's just one idea of simple, getting yeah. a group together across the state, you know, for a single to attend a national conference. Um, so then with the larger project, like the youth grants, we require the 25% match. Um, and again, it can't be used towards an individual because we really want, if it's, an, if it's an individual who wants to attend a conference or a class, then they should really be, that would be the other applying them for themselves, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and they could use the other two versions yeah, of the exactly. grant to do that. Yeah. So this, app, so we do have two different applications. The one for the CE project is obviously more in depth and more detailed. And if you're an individual taking class, you probably don't want to fill that up. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so the basic way that this grant works is that the applications will be open tomorrow, the 27th. Um, you have until December 7th to submit the application. It's all online. Um, you must be employed in an accredited Nebraska Public Library when you apply and for the duration of the conference course project. Um, by December 7th, we need to have the application and then an acknowledgement, just um, the support form from either your library director or your library board just saying, yes, we know that this person is planning this, mm -hmm. we'll help the best that we can and we support this. You should be able to click on is that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. So it's just basic. Just mm -hmm. this is who's applying. This is the library. Um, yes, we support this. Mm -hmm. And now this is something as you can see at the top as the form itself. The applications for all three are online. Yes, just an online web form. You fill in the blank type things. This is something as you can see in the instructions. It's coming up as a PDF. You actually have to physically print this out, <laughs> sign it, scan it, email it back. Back to me. Well, yeah, to Holly, yeah, which is right there. there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then that's all you need to take care of by December 7th. 
then by January 11th, we'll evaluate all the applications and let you know whether or not you've gotten, gotten the grade. So then if your application is approved, then we will send out um, the agreement form that you can read through and agree to. Um, and then more information about requesting money reimbursement and how that whole process works. Okay. okay. Now the forms themselves, you the said they'll be, forms? yeah, the application forms, they'll be available tomorrow. Yes. They're, yeah, they're, they're online. It's just we'll start accepting oh. the applications tomorrow okay. because they're you not quite finished yet. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, just little so things. Our, our computer team is working on this as we speak. <laughs> <Yes>. So, <laughs> okay. So first, um, as you can see, there's a big red yes. mode. Okay. Yeah. Be available, soon. not quite. Okay. But so this, well, let's. Okay. Go back. We are going to start with the individual one. Mm -hmm. The conference. So this is if you want to go to a conference or if you want to take an online CE course. Ah, so the first two have the same app form. Yes. So there's actually only two specific, two different forms. Yes. One for the, okay, yes. So this one, it says conference, but it's also class. It's one thing that I'll have to ask to change. But so easy enough, you fill in your name, your library, your information. What's the name of the conference or class that you want to take? The URL, so <clears throat> we can check it. Um, start date, end date. Um, so it's just a short justification. Why do you want to attend this conference? Um, how will taking part of this experience help you provide better service to your users. Mm -hmm. um, where you're also like, how does this relevant, to, how's this specific event relevant to me specifically? Like, why am yeah. I asking to go to this uh, business marketing yeah. conference call? Well, because I'm in charge of doing the PR at the yeah. library. More yeah. than just, this makes my resume look better. How does this <laughs> actually help you in your current job with your users, with, with what you're doing? Mm -hmm. um, and more, more details than just it would be fun, it would be a good project, just lots and lots of details help you. Yeah. And that size of that box, that is not the only space you have. No. You can, if you notice there's this little, yeah, it will go as long and open up as long as you keep typing. Yes. <laughs> so uh, you can be as detailed as you need to. And then you'll um, put in your estimated expenses, total cost, hit submit again, and remember to do that form. And that's all you need to do for conferences and CE courses. And that's just telling me that I need to submit. Yeah. When you do um, these applications, they don't save. You can't save and come back and do it later. Right. So if you want to fill everything out maybe in a Word document and then just copy paste so you don't lose anything, mm -hmm. it's probably a good idea. Yeah. Especially with this next one with the longer one. Right, you're gonna want like a somewhere where you can think about and yeah. develop what you're writing, kind of a little cheat sheet. Yeah, for especially yourself. if you're collaborating with other people and mm. um, you want to get the, obviously the details, and we'll go through the application, but it's probably not something that you're gonna be able to sit down and do in five minutes. <laughs> um, so then, just going quick over the application. So this is the application for the projects, the bigger groups. Um, and it's obviously a little more detailed and it's very similar if you've done a, a youth grants mm -hmm. application um, for Sally. So again, you'll fill out your information at top, project title, mm -hmm. what are your goals for the project, um, a description of the program or activities, what's going to happen, what are you planning to do, um, a detailed timeline of the training project, when is this going to start, who's doing what, um, when are you, if it's a workshop that you're doing, are you, when are you starting to take registrations? Um, so it needs to be a little more detailed than just, we're having this training sometime in June. <laughs> um, what is the CE need on which this project is based? So if it's a staff project, is there a customer service component that you've noticed for whatever reason needed filled and that's what this training is? Is there, um, something in your community that's happened that you really need, that you really feel that your librarians um, need some extra CE to help with better, or are there new services that you want to bring in that you need training on? Um, that's a good thing to think of, like, is there something, and it's, it's not a bad thing, is there something we're lacking? Yeah. 
something that are, we're, we're, we're having trouble dealing with, so we need the agile training. And this is yeah. a great opportunity to provide mm -hmm. that training and get those new services and to fill that need. Um, background information, again, this kind of goes with the CE need, but background information, how did this project um, come about? Where did you, um, where did you find that something was lacking? Um, Maybe it's background about the community. Um, if you're bringing in a particular presenter yeah. from outside, you've um, either seen them present. Yeah. Did you see them somewhere? How did you find out about this particular? Yeah, were they group? recommended or, by somebody? Yeah. Or, <clears throat> and then um, personnel who will be involved. So is this just something that you're taking the lead on, and your staff will be in the training? Are you opening this up to other library librarians in the state? Um, are you collaborating with? With other people in the system, within the state, just who's who's in on this project, basically. And then means of evaluation, success for outcomes. This is again. So your goal is this training will bring about this change. How are you going to show that? Um, so, for example, for the ALA road trip, one of the goals was provide broader attendance from Nebraska librarians at a national conference. So the measurement of that would be 100% of those attending ALA will respond positively on a survey. Um, writers will represent multiple communities of all sizes and multi-type libraries. So that gives us a good idea that there's gonna be a survey that you'll get feedback so you know that this training, this project was success, successful. Um, approximate date to begin project. And then if you would be willing if you're awarded a grant, would you be willing to um, make a presentation either either here or at some other uh, mm -hmm. state event? Yep, through our, our systems do the, you know, the spring workshops mm -hmm. that they do or spring sessions here on Encompass Live. Mm -hmm. you know, we may ask you to come on and talk about what your cool project was yeah. to share with other libraries and see you know, if they can get an idea of what they want to do. And then, of course, most importantly, the budget. Um, so then just go through each one, services, materials, cost, um, you know, does there need to be extra training before you can do the workshop, equipment, promotion, if, if that's something you'll need to do, um, which then you have the total budget and then the amount requested by us, and then again, you'll have to have that local match, um, and then down below you'll just more details about the budget. So what are the services mm -hmm. that are being contracted? What are the library materials? So if there's anything that you're buying for training that will be added into your collection, what are those? Um, are there anything for the program materials that you'll need? So the difference between those two, and those are something that Sally talked about last time too. There is, these sound similar, but the idea, and you can see the difference is the library materials is like what would stay in the library. Yeah. So yes. if you had to buy some equipment or, the handbook on how to yeah. do this training that you keep in the library for future use but then the program materials was here's the worksheets that everyone filled out yeah. during the class they take with them or if it was some sort of more interesting thing like um prizes for yeah, guessing right on a test or, or something or yeah. on a quiz yeah <laughs> the things that don't stay in the library so that's the difference between those two there and down the actual um i think they're separate out in the budget part too yeah they've got yeah. different lines so yeah and then any other equipment um, promotion, if you're doing any of this, again, getting people to register, that would go here. And then we have a nice little other box for anything else that you just don't think fits anywhere else. More information you want to supply to convince us yes. to give you the money. <laughs> Please. Um, so then for this one, again, you'll, you'll submit the application. We'll need the support uh, form. And then if there's anything that you can include for our own, um, from like the material, the, like the quotes, the letters, um, mm. anything that you're planning to purchase, if you can send those to me through email, um, I can put that with your application. Because there's there's nowhere right here to attach that those kind of documents, no, but they can just email. emailed. Yeah. yeah. Now it does say, obviously the application itself 
it says their faxes and mail will not be accepted, right? It's just because the application form itself is just this online yes. form. The signature page is a separate document, yes, says the email. Would those other supporting documents, do you think, because would those be okay if someone just says, well, they hand me a piece of paper, yeah. can I just fax it over to you? I mean, I mean that would be fine. Supporting ones? But I would want, I would say that they should make a copy, so mm -hmm. you keep your piece of paper and then just make me a copy and email. Mm -hmm. But if you want to email that kind of, or send me or fax me those kind of documents, that would be fine. We prefer to have it as much as possible scanned and yeah. electronic, so, so I can keep so it that we would have it all. Yeah. yeah. Trying to go as paperless as we can. <laughs> Um, and then also for the CE projects, it does say, um, so everything is due December 7th, but for those support documents and, the, and like the quotes and things, those can be submitted during that following week. Um, so the key is hit this save and submit button by, by the end 7th. of se se December 7th. Yes. But then if you're still gathering up all of your paperwork stuff, yeah. that can come in the next week. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And if something's missing, that's when we may ask you about it too. Yeah. You know, if you mentioned button. something and, and, and we're like, do you have a copy of that? You know, we'll ask if there's yes. something we don't we need we want to look at or need to look at and that we haven't gotten. Yes. And if you have any questions while you're going through either of the applications, um, or if you're mm -hmm. if you want to do a rough draft of the application and you want to ask me to look at it, I am more than happy to. Just mm -hmm. again, just email me, call me, and I'm happy to do that. Um, and I think that's about, and I get, okay, so there's the previous grant recipients, so if you wanted to look at what has been done in the past years. And this is good for all of our grants, as you can see from that poll down there. Um, any grants that we've offered here going back, I think as far as 2008, or sorry, 1998. <laughs> um, you can see what has been uh, what we approved and gave monies for for all of our different grants, and you can see there on the right this explanation about some of the grants changed names over the years. But um, yeah, so then you get just this basic info. Very yeah. yeah, you can kind of see maybe like what what they've done in sort of say. I remember that one. The bridges out of poverty. Yeah, yeah, I heard that was really good. <laughs> it wasn't here. But. I believe we did do a follow-up and couple slide about that one that came on the show. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so I think um, that's about all for the CE grants. And really, again, if there are questions, let me know. Yeah. If you have any questions, excuse me, while we're talking, go ahead and type them in and you can answer them now, or you can always reach out to the request again. Yeah. All right, so um, we combined both of these, the CE training and internship grants, I think, into one session because they kind of are related. They're all about education and learning more about whatever you're doing. Um, so for the internship grants, I'm the one who's in charge of those, so I would be, we'd be talking to you about the internship grants. Um, same way here, you can go to the main page for the NLC grants or to the internship grants right here on the flyout page. And this is a very different looking from our main Encompass or main Library Commission website. This is a separate site that was created for um, encouraging people to uh, join, to become a librarian, to get into the profession. So it's this now hiring at your library .nebraska.gov website. So you may have seen this is where we post job notices, uh, scholarship information, all sorts of other things about just do you want to be a librarian? Here's some information to get you there. And that is the main purpose of the internship grant program is to encourage uh, people, uh, students, high school and college students to get involved in libraries and to potentially think of that as a career for themselves. Um, the internship program as we've had is done pretty much every year over the last uh, many years and we've been with the last yeah we did in 2016, 2017 and now we're doing um, this one uh, this year's 2018 and uh, so this has been an ongoing uh, grant that we've done every year for libraries. We've got about up to $25,000 to give out to libraries to bring in someone to work in their library. Now this would be specifically for, as I said, high school and college students who have never worked in um, a library field before. So not a college student or someone who's currently one of your library assistants mm -hmm. or someone's already working at your library or anything. No, this is, you know, they're not already uh, mm -hmm. staff. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, newbies. Yeah, that's a great. Yeah. And what you can get is up to a thousand dollars per library or library branch if you are a multi branch uh, organization like on Lincoln to uh, pay the salary for these people. This is not bringing in people to be free insurance for you. They are going to be paid. Um, you can do a one person who gets the whole thousand dollar in um, a stipend for the time you use them, or you can break it up into two people, however, it works out uh, for you. To do that. This uh, application will also be available starting tomorrow. We're working on getting the electronic version ready. I've got a PDF version of it that I'll show you to see exactly what is involved in the application itself. The deadline for this one is November 9th, a little earlier than the CE one. <coughs> Excuse me, we wanted to space out each of the grants. We've had comments in the past for the both the youth, this um, the internship and the CE and training ones, not to have them all do at the same time. So we try to space them out each one month. CE is due in October, internship is November. No, youth yeah. is due in October, sorry. <laughs> in CE internship is in November and then the CE ones are in December. So as I said, the goal for this is to try and introduce uh, high school and college students to Nebraska libraries. And this will be involving them in actual real library work. This is not just get someone to be your page and shelf your books. Uh, we are talking about actually working in the back room and helping a cataloger potentially, or working on the library's Facebook page. Um, being involved in the summer reading program for next year and actually helping run the programs or create something the crafts for that so this is real library work uh, that we're talking about now it can be something that you already do and you just need an extra hand or you want an extra hand on, on doing that and you want to get someone involved in that or it could be a special project you come up with just for the purpose of this internship so for example we want to have a website for the library but no one here has the time yet to get one up and running. So can we hire someone who can come in and do that for us and be these, the social media type person, person who run that to get that website going for us? Uh, do we, so something that could be, you know, one of the examples. Um, and they can do just one project, one thing that you focus on them, or you can have them, we've had some of these, um, I know in previous, sessions we've done where they had them kind of bounce around to each department in the library too. So not just a specific one project. They're just going to help us out with summer reading all, all summer. They're just going to work on the website. But the, um, one of them was each, every two weeks they bounced from shadowing the cataloger and learning about that and then doing reference and then with the children's librarian and maybe working with the director for a while. So you can also have something where you give them a little taste of everything as well. That's really creative way, anything you can think of that will get them. The idea is you are a, being a recruiter for the library field. You want to bring in more, <laughs> be one of us <laughs> to them. So that's the idea of, of the whole, um, the idea of the whole, whole, whole grant. Um, so as I said, the forms will, the application should be available tomorrow. Um, this session I've got linked here right now because it was for anyone to watch today's session. Once this is done and the recording is up for this, I'm going to change that link and it will link to the archive page so anyone who wants to listen here today with us will be able to go and watch that. Um, the deadline is November 9th, as I said, uh, at the end of the night there, 11.59 p.m. And we will, about a month later, on December 14th, by then, as I put here, anticipated <laughs> of when we will announce, uh, let you know if you have been um, selected for um, to have the grant. The internships themselves, the way the month, the, this is working for both this grant and also for the CE ones, which I know Holly didn't mention this specifically, but it was on her page as oh, I saw. Yes. Um, the project you're doing, the event, can happen pretty much any time through 2019. Mm -hmm. This here says on or before November 30th. That's my starting, the latest we want you to maybe yeah. do something so that by the end of 2019, we have this year's grant process all wrapped up. Mm -hmm. um, that can be a little fudged if need to. However, getting the monies from us based on what our fiscal year is here at the Library Commission, we would need you to request the money by um, just June, June 1st. Um, that's just a thing that goes with our budgets. So you'll have to know this is why we're having all of these applications wrapped up and, and approved. And so you know what's coming by the end of this year so that by June of next year, June 2019, you will have at least uh, figured out what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. Even if you haven't had the event yet, 
um, or attended the conference yet or done the project with your intern or if you're in the middle of it, that's okay. We just need to have the request for the funds by June 1st of next year. And then if you've already paid for something ahead of time, that's great. If you're still going to be paying that money out afterwards, that's fine. That's just when you need to request it from us, fine. But when you, your thing takes place, it could be pretty much any time in 2019. Um, this is only eligible, uh, um, officially only uh, Nebraska's accredited public libraries are eligible to apply, but we do encourage uh, partnering with someone, other group if you want to. If you are not a public library but you want to do something like this, working with a school or a special library or a university library or something, uh, definitely partner with them. Find someone who, you know, is, is there um, a university near you that has something related to library programming? We do have library programs library school here in Nebraska and someone wants to do their uh, practicum or something related to their in library school and they want to actually test out working in a library, um, that would be something you could do, work with that, the university to then, but the library, the public library is the one who would actually be the one applying for this grant, but then explaining we are actually working with UNK, UNO, whoever to find the college student that we're going to give this application, the funding to. So in this particular grant, there is a specific amounts that you would be getting for this, anywhere from $500 to $1,000. And um, that's just the, so this isn't something that you decide it's going to cost me this much. It's the idea is you either ask for, we give you $500 for one person, we give you $1,000 for one person, $1,000 that you split between two people, however it works out. There are no matching funds required for this one. Unlike the, um, I think when it, the, 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 same, group the big group one requires matching funds, as does the uh, youth grant one. This one is no matching funds. We are simply giving you the monies that you need to um, pay the person to come and um, intern at your library. Um, and this is specifically just for wages, just to pay the individual to. Uh, work at your library. And as it says here, you can divvy it up how much you want to. If you could have multiple projects, we're going to do two different projects with two different interns, but one in project for just one intern, whatever it um, you need to do. Um, and now there's more details on the page that you can look at as you're trying to figure out what you want to do. So I'm not going to read through all of this. We're going to go through maybe the highlights of it. Um, as I said, they must be a high school or a college student and never been employed by a library or done a previous internship at a library before. Um, so not at a paid position. As you see here, just say if they have been a volunteer at your library and they've kind of already gotten the idea, hey, I really like this, and you've kind of targeted them as someone who may want to cross that line and actually become a librarian, huh? Be a good one. Yeah, uh, that, those, that would be somebody to ask, to, you know, that's a way to do it too, talk to the person first saying, would you like to intern with us? Because we have a way where we can make that happen. And rather than just volunteer, you can actually get paid for a bit and get do really more, more, yeah, do more than just whatever they've been doing as a volunteer. Um, now there is information here on about what you do need to pay them for for stipend based internships. You do have to re, um, pay the minimum wage in Nebraska, which right now is nine dollars an hour. Um, if they are uh, students hired as part time employees, it's a training wage at least really seventy five percent of that, which is six seventy five an hour. So it depends on how you're setting this up, and you can see we've got all the details here about that. What, how long your internship's going to be, and who it is that you're getting to be that intern will depend on here. Um, and you see, if you do have more, you need to know more about the federal law about working. I'm not the expert on that, and I'm not going to give <laughs> specific information. We have some of the details here, but there is an actually, which is great here, the Department of Labor, Nebraska Department of Labor has an online form. You can ask more details if you're concerned and unsure about um, how my, how's the best way for me to go about doing this. Um, uh, we have a question here uh, um, about this. Okay, for the intern project, if we have multiple libraries with one person, can we say do 500 each for two libraries for total? I think we have actually had that before, yes. Um, where, um, and I'm trying to, I'm, what I'm remembering is that we did have one where a uh, 
public library and a K-12 school, I think, did a combo application. And part of the time, the person worked for the public library and part of the time for the school. Um, so I could, I don't see why it wouldn't work if you're talking about two public libraries want to share an intern, sure. I know some of our smaller libraries might not have as much for them to do or they want to work together already on something. Um, that would be um, totally, yeah, we could totally do that. Um, just to, they would then just partner together and submit one application. If we're going to share a person, I'd rather to just have one application yeah. about that particular per position. I guess to say position. Um, yeah, but definitely we could do that. So uh, here's where the link will be to the form. It's not a link right yet. And a PDF version, we are, for this one, I do have a PDF of it, which I'm going to show you here. Uh, in a second here for you to help prepare your online form um, so that you can use that as a cheat sheet. You do not, you do not submit the PDF though, just like the um, our youth grant, NRC and training ones. You do the online form, which this will have a link to that. As I said, they're working on it right now, so I don't have a link yet. <laughs> um, but you would submit that. There is also for this one a signature page that you have to send in. Um, that same kind of thing, you print it out, sign it, scan it, email it back to me to um, message your official signature of that we are applying for this grant. Um, and here I'll, um, I'll show you those right now while we're at this. We have here is the PDF version of what the application is going to look like when it's online for the internship. Let's get this full screen. There we go. Uh, basic information about the applicant. Um, Library director information, um, whoever is going to be the supervisor. When you do have an intern you're going to bring in, you depending on what project you're going to have them working on or what area of the library you're going to want some person, one person to be the main supervisor for this person to keep track of what they're doing, make sure they're on track. Now, if you are doing a thing where you are moving them around the library to work in different areas, of course, during that time that they're like working with this children's librarian, that would be the person telling them what to do. But you do have one person who's ultimately in charge of this intern to make sure everything's being done. Now, if you're just doing one project and the project is they are my assistant for summer reading next year, then the supervisor would be whoever's in charge of your summer reading, if it's the uh, children's librarian, the library director, whoever. Um, how much are you requesting? Uh, 500 or 1,000. Um, are you planning on being a high school student, a college student who you recruit, or either? Do you, are you maybe not sure and you're just going to try? Um, or do you already know who it is? You can put that in that way. We know it's going to be a college student. Um, are you going to do one or two interns? Um, preliminary what your period would be that this intern would be. Now, this is just an example. June to August, that's kind of thinking about that's when our summer reading is, is full, full blast mm -hmm. going. Uh, but you can put that in here. And as I said here, it's preliminary. These things can change as you get into exactly what you're doing next year and you have to change the schedule for some reason. That's okay. <laughs> this is just to give us an idea of when you're thinking about doing it. Um, and now we do have some, and then we have the more detailed questions that you would answer after just the basics here. And if you are going to be doing more than one intern, like you just asked about on there, oh, that's one intern at two different libraries or uh, two different interns. In these questions, for each of these questions, you want to give us information about each of the interns, if you're going to have more than one, or in the case of the question here, if you have two different libraries sharing an intern for different purposes, you would say at library number one, so-and-so public library, the intern will do this at library number two, so-and-so school library, the intern will be doing this. That is how you'd want to answer these questions. So we don't have these questions, not going to be multiple copies of these questions, just there's like there's one background question. If you want to do more than one person or more than one library, you're going to want to you know, write it up twice, which is why you definitely want this as, as small as the books were. Write it up ahead of time, just like <clears throat> her online form when the one for this is up. <clears throat> it is not a form you can save and come back to later and pick up where you left off. You have to just do it all in one shot, one in one sitting. So you're going to want to definitely plan ahead to write all this stuff up beforehand. Um, we'll be providing you with this PDF version of it that you could print out um, or uh, type into and as just your little cheat sheet to as, or as as it, copy and paste it into the web form and that is available from this. So uh, first question here, we do have background. Describe the reason your library wants to participate in the internship grant program. State the underlying need or opportunity. Why, why do you want or need an intern? Um, has there always been something in the library that has been understaffed and you want to um, 
help that area out a little bit? Is summer reading always crazy? Or do you have a specific project you want someone to do and you don't have the staff to uh, move over, give them free time to do it? Um, hopefully also, I mean, this is, this is help. This is, there's two prongs to this internship. Um, unlike some of the grants, like for the youth grant, it's, we're doing something to provide whatever project for the kids or whatever program. For the continuing education CE, it's we're trying to teach ourselves. It's something for the librarians and the staff. In this case, it's kind of there's there's two goals for this. There's the library needs help doing something, an event, a project, whatever, and you want to encourage someone new to join the field. So you do have two different uh, things that you'd be thinking about as you're doing this application. You know, talk about what the library needs, why you need an internship at your library. Um, but also mention how you would, um, how this would benefit someone who is a high school student or a college student to um, you know, want to be a librarian in the future. Uh, schedule and description of activities. Um, this is where you get into exactly what you plan on having them do. And we're going to need some detail here. Uh, things can be adjusted, you know, as you get into the, you know, the day-to-day -day work next year when you're actually having the person on board. But this is definitely where we need to know you've thought about this, you've thought about what projects they can do, the specifics of um, what they'll be involved in. Um, if they're, if you are partnering with another school or another library, as was mentioned, how is that going to all work out? Um, Oh, this one talks about field trips to other libraries. That was one that one did. They, you know, they mainly worked at the public library, but a couple of times they took them on a field trip to the university for a day, to the university library. So that kind of focus on that we are, you know, trying to convince this high school student to go to library school and they go to college. So we're going to bring them over to the university to show them how, what, what it's working in a university library is all about. And then we're going to take them to the K-12, you know, the, 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 uh, elementary school library for a day to show them how that's all about, what that's all about. So you know, that is a really good way to get them all interested and hopefully they'll find the one that they really like. <laughs> um, uh, orientation plan. How are you going to get them orient orientated, orientated to what they're doing? And I'm actually going to show you, there's actually also on the website, which I'm just getting to on the page here. <clears throat> we do have some additional resources here, things to help you prepare for the internship. Um, there is a sample library orientation plan that you can use to, and let's see what this one does. Um, the basics that you're going to want to teach this person, if they're not already a volunteer who kind of knows some of this stuff, this is going to vary depending on, you know, your situation. Um, orienting them to just what the library is, the different things that you do. This is just a sample of what you could show them in your library. This is basically every part of a library they might be involved in. Um, but it will depend on what your project is. You probably generally do want to tell them an overview of everything the library does in the first day or two, and then jump into focusing on, and here's the part that you're going to be involved in while you're here, or the parts that you're going to be involved in while you're here. Um, we also have a proposed timeline and schedule that you can use. This is just an example there we go, of um, uh, when you need advertising, if you don't already have someone in mind, of course, that is, a, that is, a, 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 we've had applications that say, we have a volunteer so-and-so who wants to learn more or who we want to bring into the fold, <laughs> so they are going to be the intern and that's why we're applying, that's fine. But if you're just saying we're going to have this internship position available and we're going to do an open call, so to speak, that would be part of your timeline here. And then you just have your week, different weeks, what they're doing in here. This is one where they have been going around the library to do different things, as you can see. Week one was uh, completing an online, a baseline survey, expectations, what do they know already, what do they need to learn more about. Uh, week two, I'll be, they'll be all working youth services, then about borrowing and Dewey and library careers, library training. So this is just, just as I said, just an example of what you could do. But this is the kind of information we do want in the application form is, um, right here, your project activities will be involved in, your preliminary orientation plan, and this is gonna be just like on Holly's, a big free text field that you can type, as you saw that document was yeah. in a few 
three or four pages long, you'll be able to paste into here as much as you need to get all the information in there. It's not just that little bit, so be detailed. Um, and then a timeline, that timeline which you're showing you for recruitment, interviewing, um, start and end. And as it says here, it's, it's highlighted and emphasized tentative timeline. That's okay if things change, just that at least you've thought about if we uh, advertise this on this date and pick someone by this date, we can then have them do these, the project over this time frame. Mm -hmm. If things change by next year, because when you're putting this application in this year, that's okay. Just at least have a general idea of how long these things should take, and that you do definitely have it all wrapped up by the end of the year for the end of the actual um, internship itself and submitting reports to, to me about it. And we also have, is there anything in here? Um, Oh, Department of Economic Development, Nebraska has this great um, guidebook just in general about doing successful internship programs. So we'll link to that as well. That's a good guidebook to just give you um, some tips and help about how to uh, handle your internship. But on the application form, then the next question is the outcomes is what we're looking at is the last one. What are the benefits or outcomes um, to the student, the library, and the community in general? Um, if you noticed on our goals on our main page there, I, we do mention that the, there are varying multiple goals for this. The internship introduced the high school or college student to the varied and exciting work of Nebraska libraries. Um, it's a recruitment tool, provides an, students with a view of the roles of libraries. The libraries get financial assistance um, for, and get the project completed, but also um, showing how that this the whole community benefits from this um, experience, from the grant, from the library getting this grant. How does the community, and that would be one of your outcomes. How does this benefit the community in, in a, as a whole? That's one of the things that could be that because we're able to bring in the student um, to do this internship, we're able to have, you know, normally we have 30 kids at this at the summer reading program because we had an extra person on hand, we could have 50. We didn't have to cut off the um, registration for it. Or um, because we were able to have them come in and help design and, and set up to get started with our website, we now have a way to reach out more to the community and show them what services we have and give them better access to what we do. So um, thinking about beyond just the student, the library, and the community in general, how this will benefit all of them. And then the last thing that will be on here will be the link to that signature page, which is over here. There we go. And the signature page here, this is just the official I'm um, signing off that we're applying to that. The library director and library board president, want it, president we want to make sure that both the, your, your board is aware that you're doing this and, and is on, on, on board <laughs> uh, with um, the fact of bringing in an intern to the library. So your library director, your head of your library board will both sign this and then email it to me. Ooh, I've got two ads, I'll have to update that. I'll fix that. But, <laughs> um, And so that's the application. Yeah, it's not too long, but there is, you know, there's not very many questions, but you, it is, this is where you give your detail. You explain what your thought process is, what you're doing, what you're thinking of um, having this uh, intern be involved with at the library, at your library. We do also have on the internship website, some, as you scroll down to the very bottom here, some information about expectations, a lot more detail. And you'll get a lot more detail about this when we do um, approve you and get your, your applicate, your uh, agreement forms and everything too. So something to look at later that I won't worry about going into right now. Um, I just want to get yeah. out there that these grants available, what it's for. Anybody have any questions about doing an intern? Um, and I think we did have a link here as well, at the very bottom, yes. Um, we'll have to update this because I know we had interns of some sort in 2017. I have to find out who they were, but we have a map here, interactive map, so you can see who has done um, where we've had interns previously across the state and at which libraries they were. So if you wanted to potentially talk to a previous library who's done an intern, you can get that information from here. And or if you wanted to, that grant recipients database that we have. Um, oh, they have specific ones. Oh, this is the list of the ones that have received the grants, specifically internship grants. So you can see who, oh, there's the four that we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, those were all related to the Makerspace, Library Innovation Studios Makerspace grants that we're doing currently. 
But before that, it was all open to anyone. Uh, so we're doing it again this year. Open to anyone, as well as the library makerspace, uh, the libraries involved in our grant for this upcoming year. So this is just a list of them, um, but you could also use the, the grants database to find the same information as well. Or our fancy schmancy map. <laughs> yeah, we do a lot of things like that. It's a nice little visual representation. And it also is also so good if you're wondering, did someone near your library do one and you can just pop down the road and chat with them? Maybe there's some library in your area that you are more closer to them just as, as a colleague, and you can now pick up the phone and say, hey, Sue, I, I saw you did an intern. I want to ask you about it because we're interested in one, too. All right. So any other questions, any questions about doing internship grants? We've got about five after right now. Um, we did start a little late today, uh, wait for people to log in. So um, we're just you know, wrapping up a little late, not a problem. Everything is being recorded, so if you weren't here for the whole time, that's fine. Um, so anybody have any questions about the internship grants or the continuing education training grants? Type them in now and let us know. Anything else you want to say about yours that you didn't? Basic. Mm -hmm. Those are the basics. <laughs> Lots of details are good. Mm -hmm. Yes, the more details, the better. Um, if we get an application that just has a couple of sentences in each, we're going to not know uh, what you really want. And because you might have a project in mind, mm -hmm. but for us, who has no idea. Can we read through your application and understand what you want to do and what the project's going to be and why you're doing it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easier definitely because you know we have we each put together a uh, committee, I suppose, mm -hmm. a group of people, not a huge committee, <laughs> not just us. that, yeah, that help us decide this. So we need as much information as possible to share with them about what you're doing, so they can properly evaluate it. Um, so if you're too 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 vague or too short. Um, there's only so much we can do to ask you for more information. Um, ideally, by the time you submit, get one of these applications together, that's what you should have thought about mm -hmm. and give us as much detail as possible. And there may be a few things that we may you know, want more information on yeah. because as we're reading it, we say, I get this and it's great, but I wonder about this little bit here. No, we'll just reach out to you. No big deal. So it doesn't look like anybody's typed any questions while I've been talking, and that's fine. Um, look for both of these applications to go live tomorrow, as long as our computer team, they, they, they told us that <laughs> that will happen. Um, the, um, as you saw on uh, the Holly C in training grant pages, the, the forms are there, a work in progress, mm -hmm. not available to hit submit yet. Um, mine will be posted as well. We will post an announcement officially tomorrow yes. when we, you know, so you'll see something go out on our mailing lists and blog on our website um, to let you know when they're actually live and ready to go. So don't go looking at like 7.30 tomorrow morning. <laughs> Can't guarantee that will be exactly. But sometime tomorrow we'll, we'll send out notifications so that you know that it's ready for you guys to go ahead and apply for. All right. Doesn't look like anybody's got any other questions they want. Well, I think we want to go. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Holly, for sitting here with me doing this. Thank you, everyone, for attending. I hope you will apply for um, any of these grants. We've got for each of the three grants, we've got about twenty-five thousand dollars each to to um, be distributed. So twenty-five thousand in CE and training, twenty-five thousand in youth, and twenty-five thousand in internship. So we've got a good chunk of money, and we want to give. That we want to get. The idea is to give it out to you, yeah. Um, and in the internship one, as you see, it's five hundred or a thousand. So that's a lot of money to yeah. go around um, for the CE training and uh, youth ones. It's however much you. It's you need to yeah. spend on something, so um, but it's still good. Yeah, so we want to we want to give it out. That's what some money's for is to give away. <laughs> Nothing else we can do that if we just hold on to it. <laughs> so apply and get those applications in. Um, the C the youth grant is already out available. That was our training session last week, and these two will be available um, sometime tomorrow. Yeah. All right. So that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, I'm going to go to our Encompass Live page, which is under Education and Training, or if you just Google Encompass Live, you find us. 
um, the archive of today's session will be right here. This is our upcoming shows, but this is where our archives go. There's a link right underneath our upcoming ones. And here's a link, as I said, to the Youth Grant for Excellence one. It's a recording that Sally did last week. The recording for today's show will become right up above this one, and you'll have a link to that and then link to both pages for the CE um, and training grant page and the internship grant page. It put links to both of those. Everyone who attended today's show at, and uh, registered will receive an email directly sent to you, letting you know that it's available, and it will be posted onto our various social media and website and mailing lists. Um, so look for that. Now, normally at this point, I would say, I hope you join us for next week's show, but we do not have a show next week. Uh, this is the one week of the year that we take a break from Encompass Live. Uh, Encompass Live is um, our weekly show, 51 weeks of the year. The one week we take off is the week of our state library conference. This is our Nebraska Library Association and Nebraska School Librarians Association annual conference. And that is next week here in Lincoln, October 4th through 6th. And we do not have a show next week, so we take the date that week off. If you're attending conference, um, enjoy that instead. Our next show after that will be on October 10th, uh, virtual tours in the library with Nebraska history. Um, and there's our Jesus picture there. Um, this is uh, Annie Mungard, who is from the University of Nebraska State Museum. Uh, will be coming on the show with us to show about how you can have virtual tours that the University of Nebraska State Museum can do for your school or library. They will uh, come in virtually, virtually through um, like this, like an online webinar, and do tours and training and educational um, visits to about the things they have in the library. So in this case, we're going to do a demo. Should talk about it, a demo of the Elephant Room, where Archie, the I think I think this is the world's largest intact. Um, mammoth um, skeleton is here in Nebraska. So she's going to show a demo of how that works and how you can have this brought into your library. So definitely uh, join us for next week's show and any of our other ones we have coming up. I've got other other shows coming up I'm scheduling for uh, November and December. So as they get um, booked, they'll be on this page as well. So please join us. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. You'll see I've had some links here everywhere. So if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. If it loads up, there we go. We do post reminders of, here's a reminder to log in for today's show. There it is. When, when our archives are available, here's reminders about when our last week's recording was available. So if you are ready, it was ready to be watched. So if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there and you'll keep notified and be up to date on what we're doing on this live. Other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. For an hour today, Holly. Thank you everyone for attending, and hopefully, we'll see you in two weeks um, at the next Encompass Live. Bye bye.